trying to come back. Star Telly saying two mic rhymes Be them average MCs of the times Unlike them, we grab gems So systematically inclined The pen lines without saying The producer's name, I'm over the track Yeah, I said it, what you need to do Is get back to uh, I interview all you guys And I believe that you guys are the future of Hip-hop in the D.C. area So I just wanted to capture the moment And, you know, interview all you guys at one time And then do a photo shoot and this, this is Kev. He's gonna help me. So, what up, Kev? Sorry, that was the wrong hand. It was good. <laughs> this is Nadia. Um, yeah. Nadia and I will be working on um, a show, a reality show, in a couple weeks. Uh, it's it's gonna be R and B based. We're gonna be have we're gonna be pairing singers up with hip hop producers to do singles. So, you guys will be you know first in line to come in. We'll be shooting here. Okay. So. We're looking for singers now, so we're gonna pair up, you know, pair you guys up with, you know, uh, Allison Carney has agreed to do it, uh, Green Tea. Um, I reached out to some other, some other singers, so we're just waiting on the word. So, okay. and she's gonna be one of the A and R's, so, you know, she'll be listening to the beats and. She's going to be harder than me. Cause. I have 10 years of um, music business experience. I worked for Def Jam for seven years. I'm from Chicago. Um, I live in D.C. now. So. Awesome. Southside. What part of Chicago? Southside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got family over there. Okay. Yeah, like so you know them. You know about us, then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that. Hey, sir, I, I just want to start off by uh, talking to uh, Praise, since he's right here. Like, this year you have, like, you've secured placements with Torre. Um, you're working, you're going to be working with Frau Monch, uh, Sky Zoo. Like, how is, how, well, how, how does that feel? It feels great, man. <laughs> this is stuff you dream of. I mean, I mean just even a little bit of, of, of exposure you get you know every single bit of it is is, is like it's, it's it's surreal like you're like man I'm, i got a track with people i grew up listening to right so yeah i mean it's, it's super early stages so hopefully hopefully it progresses to something a little, a little heavier but Tor torrey's already used the used the beat though like yeah, yeah he yeah. actually used the beat that i filmed for your yeah. <laughs> for your video yeah you know some of these beats get made years in advance yeah yeah, yeah. when, <laughs> when we do that video like three years ago yeah, almost four, going on four years. Yeah, it's yeah. still it's still hot though. So you should. Yeah, is timeless. I hope so. I like to think so. Yeah. yeah appreciate so what that. was the feeling when you got the phone call from Torre? I like, yeah, passed out. It was crazy. I didn't even find. <laughs> I found out. He um he told me by sending it to me. I heard the track first. So I was like, wow, like it's, <laughs> like you recorded it already. That's it's, that's crazy. How did you get the track? I sent it to him. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> yeah, but I think I mean you always send batches to people and and you know. But you had met Sky Zoo before Torre though. Right. That's, right, that, right. So that was your connect to Torre. Uh. Almost, maybe. Almost, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's, there's a few other people in between there, but. Okay. Yeah, you know, six degrees of, you know, between everybody, so. You know, right, right. People know people. Okay. All yeah. right, so what what else you got coming up? Because I know. Uh, a couple things. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about any of it, because I'm, okay. I'm scared any of it will fall through, and I look stupid on. on All right. On, yeah. Fell much. <laughs> um, I don't know who else. <laughs> yeah, but okay. hopefully some good stuff. Y'all, As soon as y'all hear it, y'all know this is what I was talking about. So. Okay. So hopefully. Hopefully sometime soon y'all hear something. We talking A-list artists, like perform at Verizon. We'll see, we'll see. Verizon Center artists, yeah, not well, uh, we'll club see. live artists. <laughs> I mean, so, no so this all the, Yeah, that's that's you. Gadget said that. Gadget said that about the nah, about club I, live artists. I fuck with the club live artists. You like you like Hot 97 all talking day. about the minor league and major league artists. No, and all nah, that. I'm, I'm streets all day. Yeah. I don't care about that. AB <laughs> yeah. the Pro. What's up, man? XO, uh, The Grey Album. Um, you did some stuff, I think, with Gordo Brega. You did some stuff with Raheem Devon. Yeah. Like, yeah. what's up? You then you when you nominate for a Grammy? Or no? no? That song wasn't no, nominated. Nah. I, I never heard of that. Okay, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we we're getting close, you know. We're getting close, absolutely. But you know, just starting at a young age, and you know, first time I started doing music was actually being in the studio with Kanye West. And, the rest was history. I just wanted to do what he did, you know. And um, 
that's what it is. Took it to another level. That's where we at, D.C. I'm from Southeast. I don't have too much around me, but just being in the studio and, and dedicating myself to that alone has, you know, put me in a good position. So, you know, I'm humble and I'm thankful for what, uh, you know, what has been given to me so far. Right. What was it like working with Raheem? Raheem is a good dude, man. Like, he... he he, he'll change the lyrics up and all that, but he'll still make you feel good about what he did. So, you know, he's a very creative soul. He started off uh, on the U Street side and before I was even on the scene. Uh, and he just had the open arm, extended his arm, and, you know, we made a good record. You know, and breaking bread is always a good thing. Too. And it made the album yeah. on, was it RCA, Jive? Yeah, yeah. RCA, Jive. It definitely made the album. So you've been part of some big budget money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Budget was opened up. Okay. Uh, what What you and XO got coming? Uh, XO is working on this new project. You know, he has a lot more other producers on there. He's and always surprises. working. Yeah. That dude always working. Yeah. And I, uh, I encourage them to work with more producers. Like, you know, even in this room alone. You know. I, I, I love to see that grain and bring the best out of them because we're all here for a reason. You got to bring the best out of, of the artist. So, right. You know, that's where we at with it. Okay. Face. Yes, sir. True school. Yes, sir. Tell us, tell us what you what you working on, and t tell everybody your history in case they don't they don't know. Um, started, born and raised in Baltimore. Been living in D.C. for about seven years. Um, started as a DJ, still DJing. Um, long story short of everything is, uh, was able to do a gig with, um, with Ninth Wonder, met him, um, became a part of his crew, the True School DJs. Shout out to Cousin BJ, Clip, everybody else on the team. Um, and then a little while after that, he brought me into his chapter of the uh, Universal Zulu Nation. Shout out to them. Um, but... <clears throat> Being around him, I've been able to learn a lot lately, but I've always been making beats. I've always been, I rhyme as well. Um, so I've always been on those three points, um, DJing, MCing, and beat making. Uh, I've done a few things for um, a lot of up and coming people. Um, one, one other thing I did put out there a while ago was uh, I did a track for Tajay uh, from Souls of Mischief. Um, so right now I'm just working on my album actually, which will have some of my production on it. Um, it has production from Crisis, Beat Miners, Illmind, uh, which also features Tajay on the track. We just shot the video for that, uh, which will be coming out real soon. The album should drop in July. So um, really, I'm just working on that album. Marble Cake Diaries is the name of it. Look out for it. And um, always submitting beats to you know whoever I can and whoever I feel is the right fit right now now let me ask you like most most of you guys are pretty much uh not like nationally known but like if somebody like two chains came up to you everybody in this room would say yes to to two chains hopping on the track am i correct like nobody's gonna say no to two chains no matter how underground you think you are no nobody's gonna say no to Def Jam say yo we're gonna give you 15,000 for a track if you do it your way like if you if you can bring two chains into your world I think that's a whole lot better than doing what you don't want to do because I think the music is better when it comes from the heart and when it's not forced yeah all right thanks face what up straight beats it's good What's up? Tell them uh, your, your, your history and what you're working on, buddy. Um, I don't got too much history, man. You know, I'm, I'm just still, Come on, man. I like a, a new cat, you know. Um, still trying to get myself known. Um, most of my work, I've, I've worked with um, Lay Low. Shout out to High Definition Society. You know what I'm saying? In the Loop Gang. Um, shoot, man. Uh, shout out my man Jay Butter, for real. That's the reason why I'm pretty much affiliated with a lot of people that, you know, that's in the local scene. Um, haven't had my big opportunity yet, you know, but um, it's a lot of good talent out here, man, that's, um, that's going to do something soon. So, you know, I feel like working with them and, you know, 
getting them on, on some of my tracks and, you know, we bonding and stuff, then maybe once they, you know, you know pop off or whatever, you know, they come back and holler at me and, you know, we do some business, you know. So, you know, I love the music. Been go go bands since I was like 14, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, just working on working on this new instrumental project too. Um, doing a little um, tribute to uh, Marvin Gaye. Um, he has, you know, he put out a soundtrack um, back in the 70s, the Trouble Man joint, and um, pretty much every track on there, just flipped each one and um, put it out. And you know, Gadget's helping me out with that. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out Scratch Magazine TV and all that. And um, that's pretty much it, man. You know, s submitting beats on the constant, you know, and um, just keep working, man. You know, that's it. That's pretty much it. Okay. Um, got some work with my man Lalo coming out in a few weeks. You know, Life Has Never Die. And um, also working with my man um, It's Easy from the Hippie Life Crew. We got uh, a couple joints coming out. His, um, his uh, Bait Guard album coming out soon, so, you know. So hopefully he has some joints on my man Lyricist shit that's coming out soon. So, you know, I'm just working, man, just networking, that's it. So, yeah. That's just a JS. What's good? Over in the corner. <laughs> you 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 like you like the man of the year. I just seen um you you got a joint with uh Wordsworth? Wordsmith. Wordsmith. Yeah. Yeah. Um well just brief history, um been producer for about ten years since I was young. Uh twenty one now. Uh, first placement I got was with uh, Young Chris when he was with Rock Nation. Um, did like five instrumental albums myself. Um, oh, recently I can finally say it. I signed with uh, BOA. Um, oh, doing some MTV stuff and, you know, just working. That's what's up. Uh, uh, scoring and, you know, a little bit of everything. You, you, you ever get that French Montana thing straightened up? Yeah, what I did with that, it was a... Um, it was like a little demo track inside of, uh, what was it, Con, Contact. So, I mean, it's all good. Okay. Yeah. In case you didn't know French Montana, Jack, <laughs> Jack my man. Nah, it's all good. We, we, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, man, just, just stay tuned. It's going to be a good year. Okay. That's what's up. Side nod. Peace, let's go. What's happening? Nah, man, me too, man. Come on, man. You know the, the, the history and what you're working on, man. All right. Well, the history is back when I was stealing records, you know, making pause breaks and stuff like that. Um, back in the days, I started like a, like a my own label. Like, I used to live in North Carolina. I used to live in Charlotte. Um, so I started, like, making a little pause breaks, making little tapes and stuff like that. Um, I was managing, like, started managing artists at a young age and stuff like that. I started working with a group like out of Atlanta called um, Prophetics. So me and me and Sarah, I, was, I started managing them. Like I started working on their first album. So like the produce, I was around doing that album and also the producers on the album was like myself, their DJ John Doe, and like, you know, MF Doom, like Doom was on the album. So, I mean, you know, I, like I, that's my side. I started a label, put out a couple of 12 inches, um, Pause. like hip hop site, sandbox automatic, put a walk. Yo. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm here right now. So, um, <laughs> nah, it's like, that's like, that's like the history. I put out a couple of things, um, work with a couple of artists, like, um, see, like Superstition, like my man Kill Ripkin. As a matter of fact, Kill is, was the old partner of Torrey, like they had a group yeah, called Lessons. Yeah, yeah. yeah so um, I worked with those artists. And I stopped doing music for a minute. And so I moved here, and for some reason I got that bug again. And so I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna try to throw out some stuff. So I did a song called The Call of the Wild. And so when I did that, like a couple of hours later, I got a call from Germany. So I started doing interviews, like a couple of like different people over there overseas. Gadget saw it, Gadget hopped on it, He's like, yo, you know I'm saying, let's do something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yo, pa pause oh, on that. Yo, cut that. Gadgets don't have on nothing. <laughs> yo, <laughs> so, like, you know, Gadget saw it. So, Gadget seen something. So, we started so we start working. Like, right now, I'm working on a, um, my first EP. It's called the Actual Heat. And it's like, production wise, it's like I'm handling all production. When I do, like, my beats are kind of like a throwback. It's like I sample, like I, they're dusty. It could be straight drums, it could be a loop, 
it could be whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? If it's nasty, I'm with it. And I'm just like, just dribble every something down and just go, go for it. And that album I got, it should be out real soon. It's coming soon. And the features on there is just myself. I got Camber, YU, and, you know what I'm saying? That's it, my man, Leaky Apollo. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. And after that, I'm working on another EP called um, Do You Dream in English? And that is just straight, like, it's straight for the tape decks. It's going to be real dirty, dusty. I'm probably going to record that with, like, a dynamic mic. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. Were you were you were you in the studio with MF Doom? Like yeah, I does, saw him. Does, does he does he record with the mask on? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Okay, all right. Mask on. All right, just wanted to know. <laughs> Different looking dude though, man. Know <laughs> <laughs> what that means? <laughs> okay. My man Hellprop. What's good? What's happening? Chilling. Another Baltimore Baltimore native. No, I'm actually from C. Pleasant, Maryland. That's right. PG <laughs> County. Out to be more in 2000. And, uh, man, I just want to say what an honor it is to be in the, in the room with Caliber Producers and it is. It's just crazy, you know. It all started off with um, me being on YouTube, just putting out videos, you know, making beats on, online or whatever with the camera set up. And, and I guess that's how you saw me. Yeah. And uh, we hooked up and we did the behind the beats and... It's been crazy ever since since then and and that that behind the beats i told you about the album um i oh. want my want my daddy's records um based off my uh love for sam and his son and my father had just passed away like a couple days a couple days right before we did that video we did the uh behind the beats so you know it's basically records that he he used and he were well, not used but he listened to you know you know motown stuff james brown you know, a lot of jazz and Maja Mall. And I took those records, sampled them, and, you know, made it, made the instrumental album. And uh, it's been getting a, a lot of good feedback and appreciate the the love from you, you know. No problem. You still, you using the, the 2500 or the 5000? I use, man, I'm, you know, I'm... And you, and you can use machine. I use machine. You're a machine I, monster, man. I'm an XL head. you a gear monster. And, uh, yeah, I'm a gear head. I got the, uh, the 5000, the 25... Love the 2500 with the JJOS. I mean, that's just, you can do the non-destructive chopping and everything, but, uh, not use machine, but, but yeah. Okay. Got something coming out, um, based on, cause I'm a, I'm a good wheel head. I go all, go to all the good wheels, uh, you, Salvation Army. You know, I already know. Records. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's, um, yeah. it's going to be based off that. It's going to be a, a, a instrumental album plus like a, like a documentary type thing, um, video and stuff like that. Showing how I put the beats together and stuff like that. Okay. What's good, Prey? What up, man? bro? What's up with you, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Go ahead. So, so what's good? What's good? What's happening? You 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 you've made a lot of noise in the in the DMV. Everybody yeah, knows who sure. Russell is. Like just trying to make sure. It Every everybody you know most some people in Pittsburgh know who you are from your work with uh, yeah, what's his name? Bo the Boaz. Uh, yeah. Boston Records. We just did a joint. That was it was a couple months back. Uh, but it was on his last uh his last project, uh Bases Loaded. Did a joint for him. Uh yeah, check that joint out. He got it up on that piff, I believe still. Yeah. But we got some things in the works for y'all, man. Showing my man A B about a week or two ago. Working on some yeah. good stuff for y'all. If y'all know uh Dose Yeah. Got yeah. some stuff on yeah. deck with him. Lined up, of course. Interlude. Man, leave it, man. He left the day, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, he's in Dallas, man. Yeah, man. He had it yeah. out, man. Best of, best of luck to him. His he moved? Out there. Yeah, yeah, that's he my slid brother. Out to he's Dallas. gone. Yeah, he's gone. Damn. <laughs> he's gone. But, yeah. We left something good for y'all, man. Yeah. Before he drops his next stuff. Me, AB, yeah. Soulful got some heat with him as well. Mm -hmm. Shout out Soulful, man. Definitely. True day. What else? What else you working on? Uh... You always working on multiple is, uh, projects. Hmm? You always working on multiple projects at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I like to I like to stay occupied with a, a couple projects on deck. Um, the first up is gonna be uh, more likely Tef Wesley. Mm. We got uh, we got the man Eddie Sancho putting mm, his uh, touch on that joint. So, I've been waiting on that. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. It's like three years in the making, man. Yeah, but I'd rather have it right, you know. And, and take like something like that. I don't want to try and detox nothing, but <laughs> just, I think it would be a good side by work for what y'all, 
for what y'all want, man. And uh, that joint's coming up. Chorus Lyricist, y'all know the Balance series has been uh, popping off lately. Uh, he's been getting a lot of good looks off of that. So we, we coming back with the fourth installment for y'all. Uh, got some joints on there with, uh, what is it? Uh, mine escapes me. Uh, definitely Casito's on there. Shouts out to Casito. And uh, King Greatness. Got to join on there with him too. Uh, I think he's gonna set PG on fire with that. Yeah. I got to join on That's there. The, um, King, King yeah, Greatness yeah. is dope. Yeah, yeah I heard. Hey, he man, that shit for me the other day, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit go. He talking about the remix too. Yeah. yeah. Yo, like. <laughs> when I tell y'all, lyricists got some heavy shit yeah. on deck. Mm -hmm. He played me some joints the other day. Listen, Jason, man. He Bye. got some serious heat. That joint's more likely gonna drop within the next couple months or so. So look, be on the lookout for that. That's the Balance Power EP. And then got project as I said before with Dose Sigma Poem, that's on deck. And uh, I hooked up with my man Twan from DTMD, if y'all know him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh we might be putting something together quick, you know, got a little momentum with a couple records that we had done. So mm -hmm. be on the lookout for that as well. But yeah, just trying to stay busy. I might throw an instrumental project in the meantime from time to time. But yeah, just be on the lookout, you know. Russellbandcamp.com, interlubeuncut.com. Alright, that's what's up. Hello. Some of y'all may have seen uh, the needle drops we've been doing. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You, with, so, um, you know, if you don't know where if you don't know where sample came from, just <laughs> just call heck up on the phone four four three. Excellent. Right. Yeah. Like it's it's only like three dudes in in DC that I know of that can name drums like Kanye used these drums Jay-Z used these drums like y'all people can spot it but heck can like pull the record within it's, like a minute exactly <laughs> like it's, picture all that like it's a gift and a curse at the same time so um anyway you know been doing this for a while history is extensive um, can't say that I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of big artists and name artists and stuff like that but I've definitely put in my time to craft my skill you know, I've been through so many different types of gears over the year. Um, you know, and I've worked with some local artists. Probably the biggest project that I got right now that, um, you know, straight knows who I'm talking about with Lalo. Um, All right. Yeah, yeah, we got a project that, I mean, I got to say that between the two of us pretty much poured our heart and soul into it. So, hoping to get that wrapped up and finished and put it out. Um, something special. I'm, I stand firm by it as though he stands firm by it as well. Um, you know, got some instrumental tapes I'm going to be putting out. I got a special uh, theme project. I'm keep it quiet for now until I put it out. But that's in the works. Um, you know, I'm just looking to do good things for the future. You know, basically to put, you know, good music out and let, you know, folks know that D.C. is definitely a representation of good music, caliber artists and all of that. And I want to put out music, you know, that, that people are going to appreciate because I think we've all gotten so bombarded by such the dumbed down, you know, quality of music that's out there that we've kind of been force fed to accept and I think everybody in here can agree for every producer that's here that, you know, we, we tired of it, we want to make better music, better quality music, so. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Like if a, if a beat is whack, you know, I'm going to say, no, that's not it. She's going to say something else. <laughs> give my opinion. You give your, we, we're going to bump heads, I, I already. <laughs> I already know, but don't don't take it personal. She's a very nice girl, so. I am. I'm a very nice girl, but I'm very critical, and I know what works. I know what works in radio. Um, that's what I spent most of my time doing, getting records for the radio. So my ear might be a little bit different. I know what works for the mainstream audience. I'm not for sure what will work for what your friends like, but I'll tell you what will work for the industry. So that's where my opinion comes in. And you will display it. I want you to display it. I will. Okay. Right. I have my own company. It's called Industry. I do uh, marketing and promotion consulting for artists who are trying to get uh, their stuff in the music business. I have good relationships with A&Rs. I have relationships at rate other record labels. So if you guys are working with any artists and you'd like to get their stuff kind of to the next level, that's kind of where I come in. So my company's called Industry. So you asked, what was your question? Who... In the commercial side, are you feeling right now? Who's in your iPod? Who's in my iPod? Um, ooh. Well, I like, um, 
don't know. Don't ask me that question. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, we can start a right. conversation. If, if, if you went to your car right now and hit play, yeah. you would come on. What's on your yeah. CD player? Um, be the first Bible on the Dash. That's one of Gunplay. my new, new records that I really like. Gunplay? Gunplay. I like that, Joe. Okay. <laughs> Don't go hard. I like it. I mean, consider what's out today. You know, people accept almost anything, but uh, it's just a balance. That's all it is. But there, there's no balance on radio. Yeah. It's oh, the, no. like on radio, not, it's not it's like the lottery. It's, it's, it's the know, monkey just, shit, and then yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <Nah, for laughs> but there's a time and a place for all that. You know, this records for all that. You know. Like there's like I feel the, the Pusha T Kanye record should be on the radio. The joint he produced. Numbers it's not on. on the yeah. It's on the board. It's crazy. Yeah, but it's crazy. Yeah. It should be on the radio. You know, for but three the, minutes from shorties in the, 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 the crib. The generation is younger than us. Uh, aren't eating it up quickly, you know, because that's not what the radio wants. I only right. listen to the radio. It's not, they, they try to uncool <laughs> that type of sound, you know. Yeah. A lot of it, a lot of it's on research. A lot of it, radio records, you know, they want to know what research as well, because if they, they take up that time on radio, like, they want to make sure people are tuning in for that time that they play a record, even if it's for like two minutes, three minutes. Yeah. And myself, you know, I like listening to radio, but I like mix. I like mixes on radio. So like right. Gemini spinning or, or Alize spinning, I like what they bring out their bag, you know. But most cats, they want to hear, you know, just, you know, whoever's on the freshman list right now. Hey, right. You know, there's some tough freshmen out there. Right. Yeah, my favorite yeah. rapper is Currency right now. Currency is extremely dope. They, they want to play Bible on the dash on the radio. No, no. Nah. I mean, radio is, a, is a, like you said, it's, it's research driven. Um, the whole point for radio is to, is basically how they project how many units will ship to a record store or okay. to a major. So or that how, many, how much advertising yeah. they you know can get for their dollar. Yeah, well, and on the record label side, we they don't really you know. The whole thing is we we give them free content for radio for them to sell for their consumers to buy to sell commercials. So that's kind of how it goes hand in hand. Um, they radio doesn't the record labels they have nothing to do with that in a sense. Just when you hear the you can win free tickets to see something to see such and such. That's when the record labels are involved. Mm -hmm. So they don't really care in a sense. The things that they market are the record's only three minutes long. How long the record lasts? If your record's six minutes long. The average consumer is going to tune out at like 3.20. And, you know, that's basically a record on the radio. How do you, how do you guys feel about the new uh, sound scan uh, changes where, you know, they're, they're counting uh, streams as a sale? Like, you can go gold on Worldstar. I mean, if you wanted to. <laughs> That's good, yeah. though. It's I mean, yeah, that's what's mm. up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any it revenue stream is good. Yeah, yeah. But they count that. I remember cats were kind of like the Spotify stream was kind of was kind of like cheapening the artists, you know. But if they count that for anywhere on the internet now, that opens up Pandora's box heavy. Like. But it's invisible money. You're, you're never seeing <laughs> a thousand streams equals one sale. Mm. I think they have to <laughs> I'll take a sale, though. <laughs> they have to yeah, show. Yeah, if I'm making money sitting here, something. I'll take it. They have to show everything because every people don't really buy. Sell, you only yeah. send, send people don't really buy CDs, you know, or sometimes MP3s anymore. They just, you know, they download, they stream, like you yeah, said. They pull it off. Right. You know, like, put their right iPhone up to their car or whatever and display it I, off I, the internet. So. I think this really benefits uh, major labels more than the independence because, you know, French Montana came out and sold 49,000. I mean, he's on Bad Boy MMG. Last week? Yeah, no, his first week, dog. Yeah. First week was 49,000. Yeah, yeah, wow. <laughs> that doesn't benefit the label, but it benefits the artist. Right. Because the artist can now tour and do make their own money. Mm -hmm. So the label's not seeing any of that money, but the, their independent camps and they're seeing that money because they're getting fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 per show and they're doing two shows sometimes in one night. What if they have a 360 deal? I was going to say, if it's on their deal, yeah, 360 deal kind of like nullifies all of that. But if you independent and you got that kind of look, shoot, all you, yeah, that number is 100,000, 10 a pop, you know, that's a nice mill. Like, Mac Miller is always the, the one who comes up that I think of independently who sold a lot and just like yeah. relatively, you he, know. He did 160, I think, his first week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Because he's actually, like, he actually can rap, you know. Yeah, I, I yeah, 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 yeah. He, he yeah. actually is entertaining, too. So, you know, somebody like French Montana, I like French Montana. But forty nine thousand is thousand is disappointing for somebody yeah, on a yeah, major yeah, label. Yeah, that's that's, that's kind of like I, I want to say. But the album snuck out though too. But yeah, well, I didn't really see the promotion yeah. until like yeah, the week really came promote, out. They don't promote like they used to. You know what I'm saying so. But then you look at but, somebody. Yeah. You look at somebody like Kendrick Lamar, right? And him, he sold a lot of records. He played a lot. But you got to look at the content too. You know, it, it's switching back to what really matters or. You know, your bars and... J. Cole, well, too. Back the lyrics. Yeah, it's getting yeah, back to that. Back you know, it's coming and back to that he slowly. He an incredibly relatable record for anybody, you know, across the masses. Yeah. You know, just, it reminds me of Kanye's first album. Yeah, it's it's almost like the Kwame effect, in a sense, you know. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to come out with that Biggie type of thing. And, you know, the, you know, the blonde streaks and stuff like that <laughs> won't be in, you know... <laughs> But it's it's all the same thing. History repeats itself. You just right. gotta yeah. know where the cheese goes, I guess. So are are the popular artists are they, are they gonna die out in two years like the Little Waynes and um, Rosses? No, nah, no. Nah. Like I, I I thought the clips were gonna be around forever. They I mean, still are. They still not, not like they used to. Clips at one time, clips had five songs in the top twenty. So did Tribe Called Quest. Mm. You know. But at the end of the day, that's just what it is. Like, that's the game. Like, when you're in it, you get your opportunity. Just make the best out of it and strategically plan it out is what I've learned. Mm -hmm. you know? I think also, too, you got to, I think nowadays, you know, the, the way the Internet has changed the game, you got to just really cultivate your fan base so they'll go with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I... I'm speaking for myself. I don't really, I have no, no energy, no focus on, you know, getting to radio. It's not a goal for me. It's just mm -hmm. growing the fan base, cultivating that fan base that'll grow with you, and move with you, so that when you are, maybe you know, some, maybe something does land on the radio. But when it goes off, you know, do, do those fans go with you, or are they on to the next one? So my mm -hmm. time is spent, you know, really trying to figure out who the fans are, and do what I want to do, be independent, but also cultivate that, that group. I mean, I watch how, um, <clears throat> just because I'm I'm able to see it, but it, they've got a great model down there at Jamla Records uh, with what Ninth is doing with his artists. And he's got several artists. Um, but they all have their own niche. They all have their own fans. Some of them fans cross, some of them don't. Um, they have their favorites, but they're pushing everything with no no real radio support it's all internet driven it's all um you know twitter street street um team so to speak and uh, the heavy just the, online man the heavy, you stream, yeah heavy every online. week somebody's talking about you stream with him exactly. he always streams his lectures right and he's mm -hmm. always connected with his fans i've noticed that so. yeah very much so so i think it's just you know making sure that that internet spotlight is on you blogs are important yeah, you know social you streams media. are important so but, social media heavy. is important but the thing is like as soon as you hit the radio, fans say, "Oh, you sold out." That's true too. Like mm, they, they fans will follow you to the end until you hit radio, and then it's a wrap. I don't know. I don't know. I think that may be just limited to hip hop. Yeah. 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 It is. It might just yeah. be hip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you see a lot of people now leaving hip hop in order to get those fans, and they're just like they're they're crossing that base just like crossing over into edm music they're pulling a little john or a pitbull move you know and i can understand that flow rider business <laughs> flow rider but but flow, flow, flow rider's never been hip-hop yeah, yeah flow rider <laughs> nah, you can't say nothing about pitbull <laughs> you can't say nothing about pitbull that's he, he he did what he was supposed to do you know? <laughs> 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 now, he, now he stuck to his roots you know what i'm saying yeah, he, did, he never it, that's where it was but um in my opinion People need to understand the definition of selling out, you know. Selling out couldn't be the same as you're selling out. Everybody's situation may be different, but the social media is really where it's at. You know, you got the Instagram now, the Vine, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and a whole bunch of YouTube. And you have to work those, like put 100% into all those sites, like... It's almost like a video game, just game. Hey, yo, hey, niggas get shot every day, baby. You be a'ight, nigga. You tough, right?